Harry engages the leadership of the National Assembly to find solutions to ongoing protests in the country. The Nigerian army clears the air on Operation Crocodile Smile. Plus, Lagos Ibadan Rail Project again in focus. This, these, and more on Panorama. I'm Ian Ray John. Many thanks for joining us. President Mamadou Buhari has firmly engaged presiding officers of the National Assembly towards ensuring that the genuine demands of the NSAL's protesters are addressed expeditiously. State House correspondent Adam Sambo reports the meeting, however, expressed worry over the accompanying violence to the protests in parts of the country, saying time has come to give the government a chance to deliver on its promises. The NSAS protest, which entered day 11 in parts of the country, is without doubt a trying moment for Nigeria and indeed its leadership. This is more so because violence has now been introduced to the somewhat peaceful agitation by the youth, indicating that the protesters might have lost control of the initiative. Senate President Ahmed Lawan and Speaker Femi Bajabi Amila are here to critically analyze the situation with President Muhammad Buhari and see what can be done urgently towards restoring order. After the meeting, which lasted about one hour 40 minutes, both the President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, and Speaker Femi Bajabi Amila reassured Nigerians, especially the youth, that President Muhammad Buhari has their interests at heart and is indeed committed to the sustainable future of the country. The essence of coming to meet Mr. President is to uh, review the situation and see the roles that the two arms of government should play in ensuring uh, that the demands of the protesters, the five-point demands, are properly addressed where legislative intervention will be required. We are ready to move in and deal with such expeditiously to ensure that we don't waste any, any time so that we address the concerns of our youth. Where the executive uh, uh, role is expected, we, uh, we are sure that the executive will also expedite action and we will be watching to ensure that uh, such uh, demands are properly uh, met. And I can assure you that there is no bigger Democrat than Mr. President. He gave us a listening ear that the same as he's always given Nigerians for the first time in, in history. Don't forget his background. Um, he, he accepted absolutely everything that um, Nigerians asked for. It's the first time in history that, because I've heard the story that, um, oh, we've had an NSARS, you know, uh, four times before in our past. And that's what people are saying. You know, and, uh, and, and uh, like I say, this is the first time you haven't heard it from Mr. President. You've never heard it from Mr. President. But now he said so. Uh, so let us tarry a little while. Give it a couple of weeks and see what happens. The presiding officers of the National Assembly therefore pleaded with the Nigerian youth to end the protest now in the greater interest of all. The protests have already yielded the desired results. First of all, they say end SARS. That was the beginning. SARS was ended not by the IGP. SARS was ended by the president himself. The, the president, uh, President Muhammad Buhari, made a statement, a presidential statement. And that would be the first time that any president will say end SARS. And SARS has ended. When you try to stop everybody from uh, engaging in their lawful businesses, closing uh, roads to markets and, and other uh, economic places, we distract the economy of the country, and that is not the best way to go. Other Nigerians have legitimate rights to go on their lawful businesses without let or hindrance, and we cannot have that when the roads are blocked. So we, we don't want a situation where there will be a degeneration of, of law and order because somebody is blocked and he feels he must have his way. So we, we, we believe that withdrawing from this process at this moment is the right thing to do. Meanwhile, give us the opportunity to deal with matters that we have, uh, as a government, agreed to, uh, to handle. I don't want the, the, our youth to lose the plot. They've done so well in terms of expressing their grievances. And the important thing is that government has heard you loud and clear. It's unfortunate what happened to, to, to the Oshu state governor. And this is where, you know, I say we begin to, 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 to lose the plot. We should not allow people to infiltrate what otherwise is a good cause. For whatever it's worth, trust government in what it has done now. It has ended SARS. Nobody can argue that. SARS has ended. It's apparently a police code. 
anywhere in the world that you don't leave a vacuum. It has to be filled. And that's why they came up with SWAT. It's a complete departure from the way SARS was uh, meant to operate. Let us remain focused. Let us stay on track. And the way to stay on track is to work with government. Senate President Ahmed Lawan and Speaker Femi Baja Biemela assured Nigerians that everyone is on the same page in this one of those tasks of achieving the desired policing with pride, trust, and integrity. From the State House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. Meanwhile, the NSAS protest in Benin seems to have taken over by hoodlums as the hitherto peaceful marches in various locations in the town have gone violent. A group attacked the Benin Correctional Center located near the city center, leading to the release of some inmates. Details will come in our subsequent bulletin. Similarly, Ondo State Governor Rotimia Kuridulu has condemned Saturday's attack on the entourage of Governor Boyega of Oshun State in Oshubo, saying protesting youths should be wary of infiltration by hoodlums. This was the message when he paid a solidarity visit to Governor Oyetola over his survival from the sinister attack. Joshua Ogunjide has details. Ondo State, Ulwa Rotimia Kuridulu, condemned the barbaric act of the attack on Governor Oitola. He thanked the governor for the critical role he played for his re-election into office. We are, all of us are supposed to set up uh, a judicial panel of inquiry so that those who have suffered, those who have claims can come and we can be compensated. The government is taking this in very serious. We are serious about it and we believe that there must be reformation. We are most, the police has to be reorientated, just like all of us too. Oshun State Governor Boyegu Tila emphasized the exigency of the intervention of the federal government at taking necessary actions to avoid further disruptions. We don't want to lose any, any, any of them. So it's painful that two people lost their life or not in the circumstance of what they have been saying. <laughs> yes, two people die, but not, not related to or connected to the issue of uh, the government visiting the venue. I thank the media for understanding and for telling the two story as it is. Earlier on, cabinet members, as well as the Oshun State House of Assembly members, were at the government house to thank God for sparing the life of the governor. There is expectation that a communique will be released in due course as the virtual governor's forum meeting holds on the NSAS protest. In Oshobo, Joshua Ogutli, NTN. And reports just reaching us says the Ado State government has imposed a 24 hours curfew across the state. This follows violent protests by NSAS protesters who have turned to be hoodlums in the guise attacking innocent people and vandalizing public property. A statement by the Secretary to the state government said that those who cannot move safely should stay put between now and 4 p.m when peace is expected to be restored. Also, Lagos State Governor Babajide Sumulu has sworn in seven-man judicial panel of inquiry and restitution to investigate cases of brutality and human rights violations allegedly committed by operatives of the dissolved special anti-robbery squad in the state. The panel, being headed by retired Justice Doris Okobi, was set for six months with the mandate to thoroughly investigate all verifiable claims of abuses and fatalities arising from SARS engagement in the state. The objective of the panel is to bring erring offenders to justice and get compensation for the victims. Nigerian youths have been urged to keep faith with the ability and sincerity of the Buhari administration to reposition Nigeria on a path of sustainable growth and development that is youth-driven. Minister of Special Duties and Intergovernmental Affairs, Senator George Akume, stated this while granting audience to two youth delegations in Abuja. Mitairi Ikme reports. Separate meetings with delegations from the Northern Youth Council of Nigeria and the Amadu Bello University Postgraduate Representative Council by the Minister of Special Duties are part of continued interface to promote patriotism among the youth. The minister was emphatic that the Buhari administration has spared no effort towards youth empowerment across all sectors, citing the Not Too Young to Run Act, the social investment programs, and the Nigeria Economic Sustainability Plan as youth-specific policies. You have a huge stake in this country, and if you look at the programs of Mr. President, they are also geared towards 
bringing in the youth. I think this is a huge uh, reservoir for you to tap in. Presidential Initiative on Agriculture and so on. All this are intended to challenge you to stand up and be part of this uh, developmental strides. The groups commended the open door policy of the Buhari administration and urged more youths to take advantage of government's policies and programs. In Abuja, Mitaire, Ikben, NT News. The Inspector General of Police, IGP, Mohamed Adamu, has reaffirmed that the new police tactical team will operate within very high professional and ethical standards, rule of law, and dictates of best international policing practices. A statement by the Force Public Relations Officer, DCP Frank Umba, says no personnel of the defunct Special Anti Robbery Squad, SARS, will be absorbed into the new tactical team. He notes that officers selected for the training are young smart and energetic officers who have acquired not less than seven years working experience with clean service records. The IGP seeks the cooperation of citizens in the ongoing development drive for a new and reformed Nigeria police. And still on security, the Nigerian army is to inject newly acquired main battle tanks to the northeast. The defense correspondent Ismail Musa at the Victor Kure shooting range in Bochi tells us that the implication of this new equipment on the decade long counter resurgency operation. These are the recently acquired VT4 main battle tanks and ST1 light tanks on demonstration. I want to Thank Mr. President, Commander and Chief President Mohamed Buhari for giving us these platforms. And we assure him that it is a deciding factor in all the myriads of security across our country. With this combination of enhanced firepower, superior mobility and shock action, and the recent success recorded by troops of Operation Lafia Dole, the Army Chief says. It is time to fight to finish. Once you go to the field, you must be decisive. I'm just coming from Meduguri and Damatru, and I've seen the tremendous efforts be made by the troops of Operation Life here at Dole. We expect you very soon to mobilize along with these vehicles to go and round up. Is that clear? Yes, sir! He directs troops to ensure regular patrol, raid and ambush. As these officers and soldiers prepare for deployment to the theater of oppression in the Northeast, the Army Chief's message is for them to be bold, courageous, and ensure regular attack on enemy's camp and location. From the Victor Kuri shooting range in Bauchi, Ismail Musa, NTA News. Meanwhile, the Nigerian Army has launched a military exercise code named Crocodile Smile 6 at the Nigerian Army Super in Gamdu, Bernu State. The Fence correspondent Ismail Musa again highlights the objective and scope of the exercise. Lieutenant General Tukubratai, the Chief of Army Staff in Gonori Gorji in Borno State, inspecting platforms deployed for Operation Crocodile Smile 6. Exercise Crocodile Smile 6, a real time military operation, is part of the Nigerian Army's aid to the civil authority that targets emerging crime. It will include cyber warfare exercises designed to identify, track, and counter negative propaganda in the social media and across the cyberspace. It will also include a positive identification component to identify Boko Haram terrorists fleeing from the northeast to other parts of the country as a result of ongoing operations as well as other criminal elements in other regions of the country. The exercise that includes civil military relations component like medical outreach, humanitarian assistance to the widows of the fallen heroes will commence on the 20th October and last till 31st December 2020. The exercise is also planned to include the conduct of cyber security awareness seminars, detect and neutralize malicious posts, fake news, illegal recruitment scam, 
and internet hackers. The exercise will hold simultaneously in all army units and formations across the country. This is to improve public safety and security, particularly this ember period. From the Nigerian Army Super Camp in Gamdu, Borno State, Ismail Musa, NTA News. And still on the exercise crocodile smile, the attention of the Nigerian Army has been drawn to news on the social media, insinuating that exercise crocodile smile six, particularly the cyber warfare component, targets the NSAS protest. A statement by the acting director, Army Public Relations, Colonel Sage Musa, says the exercise is annual scheduled to commence from the 20th of October to the 31st of December 2020 and has no relationship with any lawful protest. Colonel Sagan notes that the exercise Crocodile Smile is a yearly exercise in the Nigerian Army calendar and forecast of events, which traditionally holds from October to December, stressing that the Army has acted professionally since the civil protest started. The Directorate of Defense Media Operations, DMO, says the Air Task Force of Operation Lafia Doli has neutralized several Islamic State of West Africa province elements and destroyed their hideouts at Tudun Wogo and Tubun Guinea on the fringes of Lake Chad in Borno State. Coordinator of the DMO, Major General John Ineche, in a statement explains that this was achieved through airstrikes as part of a new subsidiary operation tagged Wutar Tapke after a series of aerial surveillance missions had indicated that the two locations were being used as staging areas where some ISWAP leaders and their fighters planned and launched attacks. Following this confirmation, the Air Task Force dispatched Nigerian Air Force fighter jets and helicopter gunships to engage the two locations, scoring accurate hits on the target areas, destroying some structures and neutralizing several of the terrorists. If you just joined us, this is Panorama, live on the network service of the NTA. A break beckons. Do stay. For now, the best and most efficient way to avoid getting infected is through regular hygienic and sanitary practices as well as social distancing. As individuals, we remain the greatest weapon to fight this pandemic. By washing our hands regularly with clean water and soap, disinfecting frequently used surfaces and areas, coughing into a tissue or elbow, and strictly adhering to infection prevention control measures in health facilities, we can contain this virus. is real. Steps to avoid this pandemic. Wash your hands regularly or sanitize your hands. Keep social and physical distancing. Avoid crowded places. Stay at home unless absolutely necessary. Don't touch your eyes, nose or mouth if your hands are not clean. Avoid the spread of coronavirus. Coronavirus is real. Thank you for staying. The National Examinations Council, NECO, says it has rescheduled the Paper 1 Computer Studies Practicals to take place on Monday, 19th October 2020 to 16th November 2020. A statement signed by Head Information and Public Relations Division, NECO, Aziz Sani, says this is due to the ongoing NSARS protest in some parts of the country. The council, however, assured all stakeholders and the general public that the affected examination materials are intact. The decision is in order to maintain the integrity and security of its examinations procedures for seamless conduct of the Council's examination. The National President Association of National Institute for Policy and Strategic Studies, KURU, 
Alumni Association and former Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Dahiru Abubakar, have identified remodeling of the Amadure system of education, tackling unemployment and insecurity as critical components and fast-tracking social economic development of the North and Nigeria as a whole. He said that this when he led other members of the association on a visit to the Jigawa State Governor, Mohamed Badaru Abubakar, in Duse. Mohamed Musa Askira has details. To Jigawa State is not different from performing the association's mandate of advising the federal and the state governments on burning national issues and strategies required to address them. The interface in Jigawa State borders around and majority education, youth and employment, and insecurity. I believe that uh, every government uh, will listen to very constructive and uh, ideal uh, recommendations that uh, anybody can give them to make a better society. The motto of Anne is towards a better society. And there is no Nigerian, no group of people who does own a better society. The Deputy Governor of Jigawa State, Umar Namadi, disclosed that the administration has paid over 5.5 billion naira in the last five years on different empowerment programs for women, youth, and farmers across the state. On the issue of al Almajiri system of education, the state government had, during the peak of the COVID-19 pandemic, provided free feeding for about 8,000 Almajiri pupils at their study centers across the state. Another proactive step taken was reuniting with their family. al Almajiri returned from Kano. Plateau, Nasra, and Kaduna with the commitments on the part of the state government to take the responsibility of enrolling them into schools to acquire Islamic and Western education. We are proud to say that in Jigawa State, the one village, one project of His Excellencies has been achieved. You can hardly go to any village in Jigawa State where I cannot identify one project that has been executed by this administration. And this project is not a government-driven project. It's a project that people desire. While in Jigawa State, the delegation paid a courtesy call on the Emir of Dute, Nuhum Hamas Sadusi, to intimate the royal father on their mission in Jigawa State. From Dute, Muhammad Musa Skira, NTA News. And away from education, flood has submerged about 4,000 houses and farmlands in Badi and Jakusko local government areas of Yobe State, with Governor May Mala Bani directing the State Emergency Management Agency to relocate to Gashwa Town in order to coordinate humanitarian activities and respond to the emergency needs of the affected communities. Executive Secretary of the agency disclosed this, said the Relocation order came after an under-support assessment conducted by a committee set up by the state governor, Yunusa Suleiman, reports. That was said to have been caused following an overflow of water from river tributaries located between Yobi and Jigal states. Data obtained from the state emergency management agency indicated that the flood has so far affected 84 communities in the two local government areas with about 4,000 farmlands and houses submerged in the disaster. The calamity came at a time when the farming communities are about to harvest their farm produce, but this dream has now been cut short by the unexpected flooding. The Executive Secretary of the State Emergency Management Agency said, following a damage assessment and focus group discussions held with leaders of the affected communities, a consensus was reached on providing short, medium and long-term support to the victims in order to regain their means of livelihoods. And the response is in three phases. One is the immediate response, which SEMA will provide uh, SOCO in terms of livelihood and shelter kits to the affected families. Two, um, the state government is planning to come up with dry season uh, support to those communities. Of course, most of the communities in Badia Jakusko are also in dry season farming. According to the executive secretary, Yobe state government is also planning to organize a stakeholder summit on flood mitigation and control with a view to finding a lasting solution to the perennial problem in the area. The flood disaster occurred a few weeks after the Director General of the National Emergency Management Agency had, during an advocacy visit, warned authorities in the state over impending flooding in the northern part of the state. In the Matru, Yenusa Suleiman, NTA News. And that's uh, Panorama this Monday. Many thanks for watching. Please remember to always stand against rape and rapists. I'm Yen Wei John. Enjoy the rest of your day.